do? How you doing today? Peppers, peppers, who's got the peppers? Today, it's all about peppers. I'm gonna make one of my favorite, absolute favorite uh, Mexican dishes, uh, chili rellenos, uh, which is a stuffed poblano pepper, uh, which is going to be absolutely delicious. Um, it's, uh, it's got a batter on top, an egg-type batter. <clears throat> we're gonna stuff it with cheese, uh, a couple of different kinds of Mexican cheese, and we're gonna cover it with a, uh, a red sauce uh, that's gonna be absolutely phenomenal. And we're gonna serve it with some refried beans and some guacamole and some sour cream. So, let's get started. I'm gonna get ready, get the peppers together, let them do what they have to do. <coughs> and then we'll, uh, we'll take it from there as far as uh, getting the show rolling. So, that being said, the first thing we gotta do is take our beautiful peppers and we gotta roast them. Because they're very hard, very firm, and we gotta make them soft and pliable so that we can get in there, get the seeds out, and stuff them. It's, this isn't like uh, some other types of stuffed peppers, but it's gonna be fabulous. Now, normally I like to do this on the stove and use the flame to roast the peppers. But, since this is an electric oven, I can't do that. So, we're gonna have to roast these in the oven. So, first off, we're gonna take a little olive oil on our beautiful raw peppers, very little olive oil, just enough so that we can coat the skin with the oil, just like that. Rub it all around, beautiful. And then we're gonna do the next pepper. And get in all the little cracks and crevices because the oil is gonna help us roast these peppers. It's gonna help because it's gonna, it's gonna raise the, the heat point on the skin of this pepper, which is what we wanna get off later on. Um, you can do this with red peppers, you can do this with jalapenos, you can do this with just the same technique with just about any kind of pepper. Like I said, normally I would love to do these uh, over an open flame, but since we don't have that, we're gonna make do. Like everything else so far. <laughs> uh, here's our jalapenos. Give them a nice coat of oil. And we've got a beautiful red pepper too. I might as well throw it in just for fun, even though it doesn't belong in this dish. <laughs> but it's going to be beautiful. Look. All right, just like that, just whole peppers. Make sure you get in all the little cracks and crevices with your oil. And we're gonna take this, I'm gonna stick it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. When that's done, we will be back. Do you see how beautiful these peppers look? They're not even cooked yet. Look at that, I had to show you that. All right, back in the oven. Along with this dish, what we're gonna make is we're gonna make some uh, guacamole, another standard side dish when it comes to Mexican cooking. Uh, which I absolutely love. And we're gonna make my version, which is a holy moly, guacamole. And we're gonna start with a clove of garlic, we're gonna crush it down, and we're gonna mince it up real fine, and then we're gonna do something really wild to it. We're gonna take it, and we're gonna sprinkle a little kosher salt. And the salt is gonna act as an abrasive. And what we're gonna do is gonna keep grinding this garlic against that salt until it becomes a very fine paste. Because, I don't know about you, but I don't generally like to take a mouthful of garlic. I like it in stages. <laughs> so, this is gonna to help to turn this garlic into a nice, even garlic paste. The salt acts as an abrasive to help grind the garlic down. 
and just keep running your knife over the side of it like this until you're satisfied with the consistency. And for me, I want this pretty, I want it pretty fine. There we go. Now it's starting to make a paste. Absolutely beautiful. Just keep running the knife back and forth over the top of it with that salt. That salt is cutting it. It's using it as like a sandpaper. And you're gonna wind up with this beautiful, very intense, because the, the more you play with garlic, the stronger the garlic flavor comes out. But it's gonna be a nice, gorgeous garlic paste. This is almost as painstaking as making aioli uh, uh, and the garlic olive oil mayonnaise. No egg, no nothing, no emulsion. The emulsion happens from the olive oil being beaten to death with the garlic. But the results are absolutely fabulous. So. Que bonito, look at that. It's absolutely gorgeous that all that uh, garlic being ground down like that and you can keep going and keep going and keep going until it's even finer but that's going to be fine for what we need right now today we're going to take our beautiful garlic paste and we're going to stick it in the bowl bum, 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 ba -dum, ba -dum. And we're going to pull the pin on some beautiful avocados that I picked up yesterday. Avocados, little, little give to the skin, cut them around. We don't want them too old, absolutely beautiful. We're going to take out the, the seed, just crack your knife in there, turn, out comes the seed. Let it go. And we're going to peel these out. I got another one here. Just go around with your knife, just like this. Blinka, blinka. Open up and it's blinka. It's beautiful. Out it comes, just like that. Very easy. Not complicated, not crazy. You don't want them too soft, you don't want them too firm. You want them just so they have a little give in the skin. Let me get a spoon. Since that's the easiest way to do this. And we're going to scoop out the flesh. Just let the spoon glide around this hard little shell that we got here. These have gotten expensive, so don't waste anything. <laughs> there's your empty shell. There's your avocado. Beautiful. Now, avocados tend to turn black immediately. Once you open them up, you have to do something with it. So, now the doors are opened. One of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna hit it with some lemon juice. Lemon juice stops it from turning that brown, disgusting color that guacamole likes to turn. So, Let's just mash this up a little bit. With our spoon. You can do a fork, you can do whatever you need to do here. Just get mashed up a little bit. Because the first thing I want to do is hit it with the juice of a lemon so that it stops the oxidation process. Before I do that, I'm going to use this beautiful little grater I got at the dollar store. And I'm going to take off the lemon zest. Because we're going to use that in this dish also. And you just zest it just like that. You only want to go down to the white part. You just want to take off the yellow. This is going to add another little depth of flavor into this guacamole. And people are going to say, oh wow, what's that? What's that little flavor? Well, they may not say it just like that. You know what I mean. They're going to wonder where you learned how to make your guacamole. 
And you're gonna tell them right here. <laughs> no, you won't. I never get credit for anything. Other people always get credit. So, we got our lemon zest in it goes. Beautiful. Don't want to waste what's caught on the back side. Throw that in also. And now we can cut our lemon and get the juice in there. And just get it all over those. Half a lemon. We'll start with a half a lemon. Taste it as you're going along. Because some people like this tart, some don't. I'm going to get a spoon, a fork, excuse me. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to get a fork. I'm going to mash this up. And then we're going to get to the other ingredients. As soon as I get this all mashed up, we'll be right back. Our guacamole is all crushed up. I've rotated our uh, peppers in the oven because they, they need to get like all nice and uh, accustomed to the heat. So I flip them all around and make them nice and happy. Um, I've got a half of an onion that I'm going to dice real fine. Again, because we don't want chunks of stuff in our guacamole. We just want little tastes. So, I'm cutting this real, real, real fine. Beautiful. About half of that is going to go into this. I'll reserve this because I'm looking at it. That was a half an onion. There's two guacamole, I mean two uh, <laughs> avocados. Uh, half of it's going to be plenty. So, we're going to mix that in. Nice little onion flavor in there. You can use shallots if you don't want onion. Shallots would be a, a little less of that onion bite. Now, Washing my hands. We got a little salt. We got a little pepper. And two ingredients I like to add that makes this stand out over everybody's guacamole. That's a little extra virgin olive oil. Just like a tablespoon and two teaspoons of sour cream. Nice heaping teaspoons. <clears throat> Just like that. And we're going to mix that all in and it's going to make this beautiful guacamole. And people are going to say, oh my goodness. Delicious guacamole you got. Just gonna mix that all in. It makes it nice and creamy, and the olive oil adds a, a nice mouthfeel to it. It's just beautiful. So there, now that that's all mixed in and a beautiful. I gotta get you in with here to see this. It's, it looks absolutely phenomenal. That's the consistency we're looking for with our beautiful guacamole. So, that being said, now that our guacamole is done, I'm gonna taste it, check our seasoning, make sure we got enough salt and pepper. Perfect, right on. Oh, great guacamole taste. Uh, I mean, excuse me, avocado taste. It's got that nice background of the garlic and the, uh, and the onions. And then it's got this silky mouthfeel. And that's all because of the olive oil. And then it's got that little tang that hits you, which is because of the sour cream. Delicious. We're gonna put this aside. I'm gonna cover it up with some plastic wrap. Our green plastic wrap, which I'm still working on. <laughs> I'm gonna still use it. I don't give 
I don't care. I'm gonna use it until it's gone. And then I'll get real <laughs> plastic wrap. We're gonna wrap this up just so the air don't hit it too much because guacamole just loves to turn brown even though we put that lemon juice in it. I'm gonna stick this in the fridge and we're gonna let it chill out and we're gonna get on our peppers should be done in about another five or ten minutes. Uh, they've been roasting at 25 30 minutes for at 450 degrees. So let me get this in the fridge then we'll start working with that and we're gonna get this meal it's gonna be fabulous. Be right. Just as a side note just like right now, I chopped up too much onion. Not, not so much, too much. Just not uh, too much for the recipe I'm using. Don't throw this out. Don't waste it. Get a Ziploc bag, stick it inside, throw it in the freezer. Perfect. Onions, peppers, certain things freeze perfectly. Throw it in the freezer. Next time you want to make an omelet or something with a little bit of onion, you pull out that bag, throw it in. Up. Bam, it's a perfect, okay? So, I'm not gonna waste this, I'm gonna wrap it up, put it in the freezer. Okay, our peppers have been cooking away at 450 degrees in the oven with that light coat of olive oil. Uh, the timer just went off, so I'm gonna pull them out. They smell absolutely delicious. This is what we wanted. See the skin popping off of this? That's what we wanted. We want that skin to blister off and the peppers to become nice and soft. To aid this process, we're going to take the bags that you pack the peppers in at the supermarket and we're going to take the peppers out and stick them in that bag. Although they look pretty soft, this is going to, this is going to let them steam in their own heat. Oh, I also threw some couple of tomatoes in there to try to intensify their flavor for, for another dish we're going to have. I figured while I was roasting something, might as well roast the other ones. So, in they go. Very hot. Be careful. And this one too. In the bag it goes. And then just seal up the bag and let that steam from all the heat that's still contained inside those peppers just, it's going to literally steam the rest of the vegetables down. So we're going to stick this in the sink because it tends to leak a lot of liquid that's coming out of the, the peppers. We're going to let it seep there for about 15-20 minutes until it gets cool enough to handle. Then we're going to peel off the skin that you saw bubbling up off of there. And then we're going to start with the rest of the, the recipe and the dinner. So, we'll be right back. Here's those beautiful tomatoes that I roasted inside the, with the peppers. This is for a totally different dish, but I figured since I'm roasting something, the oven's up that high, I might as well do kill two birds with one stone. So, in here, I've got my roasted tomatoes. I threw two crushed cloves of garlic. And I'm going to throw some extra virgin olive oil on this until it's coated, until the tomatoes are coated. I'm going to hit them with a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. I'm going to cover this with saran wrap. I'm going to stick it in the refrigerator. And in two or three days, this is going to be a absolutely fabulous bruschetta. It's going to go on a piece of bread and it's going to be phenomenal. So, just as a way to use the ingredients and use your time wisely. Here it is. Look how beautiful. Absolutely, it's going to taste phenomenal in a couple of days. So, there you go. Okay, while everything's happening, while our peppers are cooling, we're going to start to make our sauce. Now, this sauce just goes to sit underneath 
the peppers after they're done to give you that nice little Mexican flavor, that spice, that delicioso, perfecto thing that happens with Mexican food. I've got a saute pan heating up back here with a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. I'm gonna throw in half an onion and one clove of garlic and in it goes. Again, I'm not making a lot of food here. I'm just making a little bit because it's only me. So nothing's over the top, a whole onion. <laughs> no bigger budget in here. We got a little budget. So we're gonna We're just gonna cook those onions until they're like translucent, which I can't wait till I learn the heat of these electric ovens. Um, um, I'm all about using easily accessible year-round ingredients. Uh, yeah, it's nice to have fresh seasonal and all that nonsense, but we all can't um, give in to that because uh, seasonal fresh ingredients nowadays are going crazy up in price and sometimes can is just as good as fresh and this is one of those cases uh, i've got some diced tomatoes tex-mex style with some uh, green chilies already chopped up in it i'm going to throw that in with our onions and garlic And we're gonna let that mix around for a little bit. And now we're gonna use another ingredient that I absolutely love whenever I wanna pack a punch and give some flavor, is some um, chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. I don't care what brand you get, these things are absolutely phenomenal. You want some heat? This is where you bring the heat from. It's a smoky heat. It's a delicious heat. Um, for that amount, I'm probably gonna use one, maybe two of these peppers here. If all these are are smoked jalapenos that have been roasted down and roasted down until they're absolutely phenomenal and delicious. <laughs> I can eat this whole can by myself. As a matter of fact, I've done that. Um, so, all right, uh, okay, I'm getting a little carried away. Here's three of the peppers. Now, what do I do with the rest of the can? Normally, if I was home, I would take this can, I would throw it in a cup, and I would blend it up with my immersion blender until it was a thin little uh, uh, liquid paste almost. Take it, put it in a Ziploc bag, and throw it in the freezer. Then when you need some, you just break off a piece of the frozen uh, chipotle with pepper, throw it in whatever dish you're making. You don't waste it. You don't waste the whole can. I mean, okay, this was only like a dollar, dollar and change, but who wants to waste food? Not me! So, we're back on this. I'll take care of that later. Our sauce is heating up. Again, back with the immersion blender. Uh, I would personally like to hit this with immersion blender when it's all said and done, but I don't have it. So, my sauce is gonna be a little chunky. No, not to worry. I'm gonna chop this up a little bit like a here, like this. And it's gonna be a pretty fun, but not a big place. I need a mezzaluna. You know what a mezzaluna is? It's an Italian knife. Mezzaluna, it means uh, the crescent moon. It's a, a half-shaped knife with two blades. And it chops stuff like nobody's business. That would take care of this real quick. You know, people have to take care of this stuff before electricity. <laughs> so. Our chipotle is all cut up. 
I'm going to take that, I'm going to throw it in our sauce. The smell, the flavor is, I, I can just tell it's, it's going to be phenomenal. It's going to have that nice little heat in the background, that smoky flavor. It's going to be delicioso. As those new commercials for Columba say, it's going to be delicioso. I'm going to hit it with a touch of uh, crushed red pepper, only because crushed red pepper hits your palate and a slight. We're going to hit it with a little bit of pepper, regular black, cracked black, about a half a teaspoon. We're going to hit it with about a te half a teaspoon of salt. And my favorite, I don't know, it just gives such a silky feel to anything you do. A little olive oil. And we're gonna let that cook down until it's a beautiful, beautiful sauce. I can, the smell of those chipotle peppers is absolutely amazing. Um, normally, like I said, I hit this with an immersion blender and blend it up into a nice, beautiful sauce. I don't have it, Abbott. So we got to settle for a light, slightly uh, chunkier sauce. So that being said, I'm going to stick this on the back burner. I'm going to let it chill. I'm going to let it cool down. I'm going to let it do its thing. Um, our peppers are still warm. I'm waiting for them to cool down so that they're nice enough to handle. And we'll get to those, and as soon as we're ready, we're going to start stuffing our peppers with this beautiful Quattro Formaggio. Four different cheeses for our, um, for our stuffed peppers. And then we're going to mix up the batter, our egg batter, for the frying of this. We'll be right back. Thank you. Okay, our sauce for our chili rollerinos are is cooking, it's been cooking. It's absolutely phenomenal, I tasted it. Oh my goodness, the, between the, uh, the the red chili flakes and the, uh, the chipotle chilies, the sauce, it just hits you on so many levels. It's just phenomenal. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna start to make the batter for the chili rellenos. Uh, the chilies are almost cooled enough to handle. We're gonna get a bowl that have been chilling in the refrigerator. And in that bowl, we're gonna stick our egg yolks, I mean our egg whites, I'm sorry. And we're gonna do this until we pass our egg, egg whites. And we're gonna stick the yolks in another container right here, because we're going to mix those in later. But right now, we just need to make almost like a meringue. And you just go back and forth until the whites <coughs> are in the bowl, and the yolk is self-contained. Beautiful, just like that, see? It's not tough, I mean, it's, it's easy, but easy. See, just like this. Out comes the white. In goes the yellow. There we go. Okay, now we got our, our egg whites and our egg yolks separated. I'm gonna wash my hands. I suggest an electric mixer for this, but all I've got I have is a whisk. So I'm gonna whisk these up until they're frothy and white and, and almost at soft heat. When I'm done with this, we'll be right back. Okay, I it's more important that you see this than you see my beautiful face. But what I've done is I've beating this egg until 
when I do this with this with the uh, the whisk, it forms a soft peak. See that? And it stays that way. This is almost like a meringue. And now that we've got it beaten to a soft peak, we're going to take the egg yolks. We're going to put a little bit of salt in there. Just like a quarter of a teaspoon. A little bit of pepper. Same thing, quarter of a teaspoon. And we're going to beat our egg yolks like this. And then we're going to put them in here and we're going to fold them in. Now what is folding them in? Folding them in means we're going to take the egg yolks and we're going to gently mix it until, just like this, bring from the bottom to the top, bottom to the top. We don't want to disturb the air that's in these yolks that I spent five minutes beating the hell out of them until they came up nice and fluffy like this. So we're just going to move it around until the yolks are incorporated with our whites. Bring from the bottom, bring to the top. Beautiful. That's our batter for our chilies. Now I'm going to get to the chilies. I'm going to put this aside. Let me get a cloth real quick. Wipe this up. Because we've got a little egg yolk over here. And we don't want the egg yolk police coming over to give us a hard time with this. Clean that up. Okay. Now, our chilies have cooled down to the point where we can handle them. Our poblano peppers. Oh, absolutely beautiful. Look at these. Now, if they slid open, that's okay. We're going to use that slit. If they didn't slip up, slit open, we would put a cut in them so that we would have a slit to work with. There we go, beautiful, look at that. That's just from sitting in that bag, they've completely collapsed on themselves. We're gonna peel off the skin, see that? Look how easy that skin just peels right off. Because the skin is, is a not so not nice, a not so not nice. Peel the skin off. Just like that. These are the extra steps. It, it takes a little time to do, but man, it makes the dish all worth it. You see this one has a slit in it already from where it popped open. That's not a problem. We're gonna use that slit. Peel the skin off. Look at this, the skin just comes right off like nothing. That's going to make this so much more tender and delicious than if we didn't do this. Off comes our skin. It's amazing. The smell, just from sticking them in the oven and letting them roast for that 30 minutes, has made a smell of roasted peppers just permeate this kitchen right now. Okay, I'm going to peel off the rest of the skin from these peppers. And as soon as I'm done, we'll be right back. Okay, our chilies are peeled. They still have the seeds inside of them. So I'm going to take a spoon <clears throat> and wherever they cracked, because they're going to crack, don't be afraid if they do. I'm going to take out the seeds, just like this with a spoon. Peel them out, get rid of them. Just like this. Those seeds in the ribs, we're going to get rid of them. From each of these chilies. You see how they're just coming out nice, like that? Beautiful. Beautiful. 
I'm going to pull the seeds out. As soon as I'm done getting all the seeds back out, look at that. See? Just like that. It comes right out. No problem. We're going to stuff these with cheese, and then we're going to stick them in the batter, and then we're going to fry them up till they're golden brown and delicious. So, let me finish getting the rest of these seeds out, and we'll be right back. Okay, our chilies have been cleaned out. I have our four cheese mix, which I'm going to stuff them with. This is um, a uh, queso quesadilla, a uh, queso fresco, a Monterey Jack, and a cheddar cheese. We don't want to overstuff them because overstuffing is no good, they'll come apart. I'm going to put about a tablespoon of, of the cheese in each one of these chilies. Just like that, maybe a tablespoon and a half. Just like that. And then we're going to fold our chilies back up. Just like that. It's great if the stem stays in place. If not, take it out. Beautiful. Look at this. Unbelievable. And then we're going to dredge these in our, look at that, that's phenomenal. <clears throat> I'm going to put them in, I've got our hot oil over here, about a quarter of inch of oil. I'm going to take these chilies, I'm going to dip them in our, our batter until our batter coats our chilies. Just like that. And then I'm going to take out the chili and I'm going to stick it right in the hot oil. And it's going to cook until it's golden brown. Here we go. In the batter it goes. I'm going to coat that whole chili. Then into the hot oil. Okay, I have room for two in there, so. I'm going to do these two after I get those two out. We'll be right back. <clears throat> okay. I've taken our chili rellenos after they have fried on both sides, nice and deep brown. I put some of the sauce with our adobo and our uh, chipotle chilies down on the bottom. I put some refried beans over here, some um, corn and okra salad. Uh, corn, okra, and tomato salad, and for a little brightness, we're going to add our, our guacamole that we made earlier, just like that, and there you have it, chile rellenos, with refried beans, guacamole, and a corn, okra, and tomato salad. It's gonna be phenomenal. Let me get you in here so you can take a look at this. Absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to taste it. Give me a minute, let me come back around. Fork. Gotta have a fork. All right, looks, looks totally amazing. The smell that's coming off here is phenomenal. Let's try it. Drop my fork, sell the farm. This is phenomenal. Um, the smoky taste of those chipotles. The nice batter that we made for our chili rellenos. That cheese that just melted to perfection inside. Absolutely phenomenal. Get it with a little bit of the sauce. Mm. Very nice. 
that heat hits you in like two or three different spots because we got the the chipotles which have a smoky heat and then we added the um, red chili flakes which hit you in another spot phenomenal Well, tomato and okra, just out of this world. And the guacamole, now it's got a chance to sit and absorb all those different flavors. Mmm. Creamy, small, smooth, absolutely phenomenal. You gotta try this dish. Please do. Um, come back. Maybe you'll learn something. Bye-bye.